Hi, welcome to this tutorial on the relationship between f of x and its inverse function f to the minus 1 of x for any graph. Now in this tutorial I'm going to show you what that relationship is through an example here and then we're going to look at the general result and then I'm going to leave you with an example to try. So first of all, let's suppose we've got the graph f of x equals 2x plus 1 and we're asked to sketch y equals the inverse function of f, f to the minus 1 of x. Well first of all, I've got over here the graph of f of x equals 2x plus 1. It's a straight line graph. Let's just mark it in that f of x equals 2x plus 1. Being a straight line, it crosses the y-axis here at 1, and if we wanted to find out where it crosses the x-axis, we just set f of x equal to 0, and you'd find that you would get x equals minus a half. So it crosses here at minus a half. Now if we were to sketch the inverse function of f to the minus 1 of x, then it would seem as if we've got to first of all work out what it is. Well as I'll show you later on we don't but just for the moment let's just work out what that inverse function is. In the usual way what we would do is we would say let x equal make f of x that x and wherever you've got an x over here replace it with a y so we have 2y plus 1 and what we've got to now do is just make y the subject and if we rearrange this by subtracting 1 and dividing both sides by 2, you get that y equals x minus 1, all divided by 2. Or you might want to rewrite this as y equals half x, that is, divide each of the term on the top by that 2 on the bottom. So you get a half x minus a half. But then either way, you've got to replace that y with f to the minus 1 of x, the inverse function. And so you're left with half x minus a half. So what would this graph look like then if we were to draw it? Well it's got the straight line form, gradient is a half and the y-intercept is minus a half. So what it's going to look like then is something like this. There is a relationship that exists between these two graphs. You'll notice that, okay, this graph, the red graph of fx, crossed the y-axis at 1. But this graph crosses the x-axis, that's when f to the minus 1 of x equals 0, it crosses also at 1. So we could mark that in as 1. And where does the graph of f to the minus 1 of x cross the y-axis. Well that's when x is 0 and it crosses at minus a half. So this point here is at minus a half. We'll just squeeze it in there, minus a half. All right? Now what's happening is that this line is reflected in another line, the diagonal line y equals x, coming up through here, through the origin, and straight out through there the line y equals x. And this happens all the time. If we took any graph of f of x and were asked to sketch the inverse function, all we've got to do is simply reflect it in the line y equals x. We don't have to resort to working it out. So in general, what is happening is that if I've got a graph, say y equals f of x, and I'm asked to sketch the graph of y equals the inverse function, f to the minus 1 of x, then all I need to do is simply think of the line y equals x. Let's just put it in through here. It's going to be a diagonal going at 45 degrees through the origin, something like this. So there's the line y equals x. And all we need to do now is just mirror this graph then in y equals x. Now this point here is an important point because that's going to stay put. It's going to stay invariant. This point here on the x-axis gets mirrored across to a point 
the same distance as that distance, just downwards. And this point here is this distance up from the x-axis, so that gets mirrored across here to a point there, the same distance. This point here is of interest, that gets mirrored straight across to there. And this point here will get mirrored to about there. So, if we were to sketch this in, our graph is going to look something like this. Coming up through here, round, and then out like that. Not a brilliant graph, but hopefully it gives you some idea. Now there's another important point that we need to notice as well, and that is something called domain and range. Now the domain of the graph of y equals f of x goes from this point here, this x value directly up here, if I project that up there, from there to here, okay? That's the domain of f of x going from there to there. But if we look at reflecting this line in y equals x, this point here would go down to there, and this point here would go across up to here. And so what you have is a line going from there to there, which is the range now of our f to the minus 1 of x. f to the minus 1 of x goes from this lowest point which is this point here, up to the highest point across here. So what I'm trying to say is that the domain of f of x is exactly the same as the range of f to the minus 1 of x. And similarly, we can argue that if we look at the domain of our green graph here, f to the minus 1 of x, which goes from this x value here to this x value over here. Let's just mark that in, going across there. If we were to reflect this in y equals x, this point goes down to here, say, and this point would go equally up to here. Can you see that if I go up through there to there, what we have is that the domain of the inverse function becomes the range of the original function, f of x. Or you could argue that the range of f of x is the domain of the inverse function. So we just write that down. We've got here that the range of f of x is equal to the domain of f to the minus 1 of x. All right? Very important points to remember when it comes to sketching the graph of the inverse function of f of x. Okay, well I did say that I'd leave you with an example to do and I'll work through this example. So here it is. What I've done here is we've got a sketch of f of x, which equals x squared plus 4x plus 1. And the domain is x goes from minus 2 to 1 inclusive, as you can see, from minus 2 to 1. And the range of f of x goes from minus 3 to 6. Now what I want you to do is to sketch the inverse function of x and also state the range and domain of that inverse function of x. Okay, so you might like to pause the video, think about it, and come back when ready. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. So what about the sketching the inverse function? Well, we've already seen that what we need to do is consider the line y equals x which is going to look something like this, coming through the origin and out this side. So there's our line y equals x. So when it comes to sketching that inverse function, just reflect it. So it's going to look something like this.
So this would be our graph of f to the minus 1 of x. You can see that that point stays invariant and we've got to state the range and the domain of the inverse function. Well, earlier I said to you that the range of the function is the same as the domain of f of x. And the domain of f of x, you can see the red graph goes from minus 2 to 1. So when it comes to the range, then, okay, the range of f to the minus 1 of x, it's going to be exactly the same then as from minus 2 to 1. You've got to be careful though, you mustn't just say x in this case, we're talking about f to the minus 1 of x. And that goes from minus 2 to 1 inclusive. And you can see, look, this point here is the mirror image of that minus 2 there. Let's just mark it on. That minus 2 goes down to there. There's your minus 2. And that 1 there gets mirrored to the 1 over here. So you can see that the blue graph goes from the bottom here, minus 2 to 1. So that's the range of the inverse function. And the domain of that inverse function, let's just write that in. Domain of f to the minus 1 of x, what's that going to be? Well, it's stretching from this point here straight the way to this point here. This point is the mirror image of that minus 3. So it's going from minus 3 all the way to this point, which is the mirror image of 6. In other words, it is the range of f of x. So we've got to say that the domain of the inverse function is any x value that goes from minus 3 all the way up to and including 6. The domain is the range of f of x. OK, well I hope that's given you some idea then of how a function is related graphically then to its inverse function and also how the range and domain are related to one another. OK, well that brings us now to the end of this tutorial and as usual, thanks for listening.